Unfortunately, I think with online learning, one of the things that can happen is that we end up teaching in a little bit of a vacuum. Um, the only people in that class are the students and the faculty. I'm on a faculty team that uh, we review courses. So there are a team of 10 of us and we re review about five courses a year where we, the, we ask the faculty member to self-review based on the Quality Matters model. So they have to review their own course. And then we review their course. We're not subject matter experts. We're only looking at it from how the course is laid out. And we base that on Quality Matters. And then we go through their course. We look at their scores, we look at our scores, and then we sit down with them and we have a conversation about, you know, here are some great things that are going on. Here are some things that might be confusing to your students that they might not be able to find. Because if I can't find it and I understand the learning management system and I'm a new student and I come into your course and I, this is my first time with a learning management system, they're not finding it either. We have one instructional designer and she is doing the course reviews and then I look at her comments and her notes and if I see something um, that I think should be explored further I'll go into the course and look at what she's referenced in the in the review and she and I will talk it over and then it goes back to the faculty member with the sit down you know face to face explanation of everything that was uh, written up in the review anything that was noted as a suggestion or recommendation or or you have to do the this course can't go forward unless you have you know something as simple as your contact information or something that's missing I am sort of the second eye on the process after our instructional designer does it and um, I find that one of us will see things the other one doesn't and it works out really well we are hiring graduate students from the university um, kind of on a temporary basis to do uh, independent reviews of our online K-12 classes. So they're not being reviewed by the teachers that are teaching it. They're not being reviewed by the instructional designers that have designed it. They're being reviewed by a third party, um, still with an instructional design online learning background. Um, but we're getting that, that independent review. Um, and it's, it's worked great so far. We've also had students that are in our uh, either master's or doctoral uh, instructional technology program at, at Tech that have to do a, a internship or a practicum project. Um, and so we, we've had students um, in a paid position, GA or, or TA position, um, but then also some that, that have to do it for a course requirement. Uh, and so it's, it's worked both ways. Um, outstanding students and, and uh, because they're not embedded in the program, I really do get a third party independent review. The faculty um, work together in course reviews, usually programmatically. Um, so we'll use a variety of tools depending upon what the particular goal is in the program review. So it's very linked to what it is we're trying to accomplish in the program. There are two different review. One is at the um, distant learning office they will review the course if you meet the objectives of, of the online courses. The other one is the department review. Department review, we will have some experienced instructor to review the course, to review the new, newer online course so that it meets the contents of the course. Because Empire State College does mostly blended and online learning, we rarely decouple um, regular academic review with um, with online learning review. We, we try to keep the review process tied to whatever particular challenge that we have in teaching. We are asking our instructional designer and the Office of Distance Learning to do a part, part of a review process and then to, to um, ask the um, department chairperson as the content expert to see that the depth, breadth, and rigor of what they would expect on an online campus, uh, excuse me, an on-campus course meets their, that expectation in the online environment. The K-12 classes are, are built uh, with a, a subject matter expert, a teacher, uh, providing content to an instructional designer who then goes and, and builds the course. Um, so with these third-party reviews, when we get comments, suggestions, um, they go back into our curriculum team 
um, and they look at to make sure that uh, the changes that need to be made still fall within the, the necessary um, outcomes and, and requirements um, that, that the class has to have because it's a K-12 course. Um, and then it goes back to the instructional designer um, to, to make some updates and changes to the course um, to, to make sure it complies with best practices for online learning. There was going to be two people involved in the process, the faculty member that designed it and taught the course themselves, and an instructional designer. They would do the reviews themselves individually, and then would come together and have a meeting to discuss their reviews and talk about uh, a plan going forward to improvement. We generate the rubric, then, I'm, then I send it to the faculty member, and I'm like, now you do your part. Now you do your part, content reviewer, I'll do my part, and we all do it at the same time. Before the review process, I would set them like an introduction about what the process is like, what to expect, what your role is, what my role is, and uh, I would send them the, the rubric, almost with like, I guess, a guide document, like um, how to use it. So at Maritime, it was, it was a really informal process. Um, they, I would ask them to come up with a few recommendations. Based on the rubric, I would come up with a few recommendations, and we would talk about it, um, and then I would just follow up maybe a few weeks, a month later, and uh, just to discuss if anything has been implemented, what has been implemented. We have two different forms of, of training. We have an intensive two and a half day session that uh, uh, one of my colleagues um, designed and specializes in teaching that. And that uses the learning management system as kind of a guide for teaching online. So, you know, this is the tool, this is how you would use it, right? Um, I, on the other hand, inherited a course uh, that someone who's no longer in our department had designed, and it's it's equivalent. Uh, it's equivalent in time. It's it's about twenty hours worth of work, but we spread it over five weeks, four hours a week, and th the uh, the paradigm there is uh, the participant is a student, and so you experience an online course. And then there's kind of some behind the scenes stuff, you know, each, you know, why did, why did we deliver that content in that format? Well, here's why, you know, and here's how you might do it in your course. A lot of people who go through the course spend a lot of time empathizing with their students or it teaches empathy for the, you know, when they get in that role of teacher and they, now all of a sudden they're looking at the directions that they're writing more critically. The disadvantage to that is you don't get as much hands-on experience working in the LMS. So ultimately, I would like to make both of them required. And, uh, you know, um, I think that, in, in, in fact, I would say that most of the people who go through either of them come back at some point and do the other. When I first uh, was trained to teach online courses at Purchase, um, I was part of a, a faculty cohort. We all received um, our online training for online delivery for redesigning our own courses um, for online delivery. And out of that came um, the need for more uh, peer review at the faculty level. And so I was um, trained and certified in Quality Matters Review to um, review, review new courses by fellow faculty, um, both courses that were being newly designed from the ground up and courses that were being redesigned from traditional face-to-face -face delivery for online delivery. On top of being the person on that faculty team that looks at courses, we're also the training faculty. So it's faculty training faculty. Um, they're called the faculty coaches. And so we teach people who want to do green screen. We use Camtasia. So then we teach people how to use Camtasia. We teach them how to use Snagit. Uh, if you want to communicate with your students without, because you know they don't always respond to email, how do I do that with text? And the way that our school has set it up, for a while the faculty coaches were on 20% release time. And so we were, there were three hours that always had to be available. And then faculty would come to us, you know, whenever they wanted to, it didn't matter with what 20% was set aside, but you'd make that appointment with a faculty member and you would sit down with them and walk them through things. And the team rotates, so you're on the team for two years, uh, half the team rotates off, you rotate new faculty on, uh, they start going to trainings or they go to conferences and they bring back this new technology. They test it out and then they're like, this works, we should do a workshop on it. And because you are using it in your class and you teach on the LMS 
pretty consistently. You know the idiosyncrasies of the LMS. You know what you can put in and what doesn't work already before you walk into the class. You bring that into the room, plus you bring the fact of this worked, this did not work. I tried this, it was really good, but don't do this. So you bring that knowledge into the room because you're a faculty member and you're using the technology. There are a lot of things that I was able to bring back from the process of serving as a reviewer back to my own courses. So things like, um, just, uh, what's a good example? Just. Um, clarity in terms of instructions or advice or guidance. I think often um, as faculty we think we've made ourselves perfectly clear and we've um, made our expectations to students both um, things that they might expect from a class and that what we might expect from them um, and we think that we've sort of said all that we can say on the subject and that you know everybody will understand that. Well in an online environment you have to be exceedingly clear about expectations and you have to really think through, you know, have I made this as clear as possible? Even things like um, navigation, is it really obvious and, um, and clear that, you know, we're going from point A to point B to point C and you need to make sure all of your signposts are, 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 are legible in that way? It's important to look at um, course retention rates. It's important to look at grading approaches overall. Um, our institutional research office has been working with us to identify those courses where we have challenges um, in what it is we teach and giving particular emphasis to sort of those gateway courses. So either, you know, the five courses where first year students do poorly or third year students, the five courses where we have um, problems there. Um, and we're doing a more thorough look at how those course results might be impacted by course design. The, the experience should inform the teaching practice. Um, so you should be reconceptualizing, relooking at your student learning objectives, aligning that again to your activities, to your use of technologies, and to your assessment. We're working on measurable student learning outcomes and we're using Bloom's Taxonomy right now uh, for that. Um, and then the, and building a roadmap for the course. So you've aligned your module or weekly act, you know, SLO, student learning outcomes, to your course, which again is tied you know, to the department and so, to the mission of the college. Um, from that, informs your weekly module uh, activities. Again, I think I said this before, then to your use of your technologies and to your assessments. And to, to really reflect, is, uh, are these achievable? And does your student understand why they're engaged in these activities? One of the things that we do from the assessment side is we ask faculty to reflect on their assessment results, which I've found has often led to um, even just the self-realization as they're looking over the data to say, well, you know, this didn't really work and is there a better way to do it, which then leads to the revision of a class. For me, it was definitely um, the, mo the biggest challenge and the, what came back in my review was the need for more um, a more instructor presence in the online environment, which I think can be challenging um, for people who are starting to teach online for the first time. And it was very useful to me to really think about how I can put more of my presence as the instructor in the online class. And, it's, and sometimes it was simple things like just um, the day after we had an assignment due for me to record uh, a video response to it to share with everybody instead of just typing an announcement or an email or a forum post. That there's something much more useful to most students about hearing your voice, seeing your face, something, it's, it feels more authentic, it feels like a more authentic presence and that was really helpful um, feedback for me to get to think through over the course of the semester, how can I do that more often where I haven't already. Our online um offices are so supportive that we can um, look at best practices and really implement the most current technology into our classes. On campus, so we have a team like we have our instructional designer um, who had been a huge supportive resource for me. And also we have our librarians and our uh, students with disabilities officer. Um, yeah, we, so we work to, as a team and I, I feel 
that was very beneficial. The one thing about online course is not just the teacher and the students. It's not just like that. I mean, yes, it is. They are two. They are the two, two of them. They are working together. But the online office is the whole the office that support this um, collaborations. So. They are giving us a lot of help. I think when you're first starting, you ask for a lot of advice and you get a lot of support. And when you're in the training part of the process, people will be looking at your course before it's released to make sure all the bells and whistles and it really looks, you know, um, or it's curated in a way that can be very effective. Um, and as you've been teaching courses a little bit longer, you may ask, you know, again, you know, someone to come in and take a look. If you're adding something new or, you know, there's some technology that you're putting in your course that maybe you don't have as much experience in or it's just new to us or available to us to take a look at it and sort of test it and make sure it's really um, a strong component and really adding value to the course. I felt very supported throughout because it's not, it's not, uh, the review process has, for in my experience, isn't here's a review and then good luck with that. You know, it's more of a conversation and a dialogue. And so in my, in my experience, at least, um, what I got was the results of the review, but also uh, a fairly extended back and forth thing, almost a workshopping process in which I was able to say, okay, I've got all this great feedback. Here are some changes and some ways that I'm shifting things around. What do you think of it now? Is this more what the kind of what we were working towards and so it was more of a back and forth and again it was a very um, it was a peer review process so it was you know colleagues working with colleagues sort of hand in hand um, trying to move ourselves forward.